Well, hello there. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, we're going to discuss the concept of enthalpy and how we can use this to calculate the amount of energy either emitted or absorbed by a chemical reaction. So there are basically two types of reactions. Now an exothermic reaction, that is one where thermal energy is being emitted by the reaction, while an endothermic reaction is one that's absorbing thermal energy. So you'll know the difference because an exothermic reaction, for example, if you had that going on in a beaker, it would feel warm because the energy is being emitted out of the reaction and you feel the warmth in your hand. Conversely, an endothermic reaction would feel cold in your hand because it would be absorbing thermal energy out of your hand into the beaker and then into the solution. Now enthalpy is the amount or a quantitative measure of how much thermal energy is being emitted or absorbed by a chemical reaction. And technically it's worth noting that this is only true when the reaction is under a constant pressure. Now the value that we're specifically going to be looking at is the enthalpy of reaction, or the delta H Rxn. So this triangle is the Greek letter delta, and this stands for the change. H is the symbol for enthalpy, and Rxn is for reaction. So this is the change in the enthalpy over the course of a reaction. So that's the value that we're going to be looking at. Now the sign on the enthalpy of reaction is going to depend on the direction the thermal energy is flowing. So is it flowing into the reaction or out of the reaction? For example, if the delta Hn is negative, as in this reaction where we see it's negative 802.3, that tells us that thermal energy is flowing out of the reaction. So in this case, this is methane, and when methane burns with oxygen, it produces carbon dioxide, gas, and water. Well, methane is the same thing as natural gas. So yes, when you burn natural gas, like on your stove, it does in fact release heat. It emits heat, so the enthalpy is represented with a negative sign. Now keep in mind that the positive or the negative sign is just a convention, just to let us know if energy is being emitted or absorbed. You can't actually have negative energy. The negative just indicates that the energy is being emitted. Conversely, if the delta H is positive, like in this reaction, that tells us that thermal energy is going to flow into the reactions from the surroundings. So here's a reaction. We see the enthalpy of reaction is positive 182.6. So this tells us that when nitrogen reacts with oxygen, to form two nitrogen monoxides, this reaction has to absorb energy in order for the reactants to turn into products. Now one thing to keep in mind with all of these enthalpies of reaction is that the value over here is based off the balanced equation as it's written. So what I mean by that is this equation says one mole of C3H8, and this is propane by the way, which is a common fuel like in grills and such, reacts with five moles of oxygen, it forms three moles of carbon dioxide, four moles of water, and releases 2,044 kilojoules of thermal energy. So that value, 2,044, is for one mole of propane or for five moles of oxygen, for example. If I were to double the moles of propane, well then I would have to double the value for the enthalpy. Or if I were to have five moles of propane, well, it would be five times the thermal energy released. So basically then we can write conversion factors comparing the thermal energy released to the moles of either reactants or products. So for example, I could say, well, there are 2,044 kilojoules of thermal energy released per every one mole of propane according to this reaction. But if I wanted to relate the amount of thermal energy to the oxygen, well, it would be negative 2,044 kilojoules per five moles of oxygen. And of course, as with any conversion factor, you can always flip these. So you could also write this, depending on your needs, as five moles of oxygen per negative 2,044 kilojoules. Or you could write one mole of propane per negative 2,044 kilojoules. Just depends on if you need kilojoules to cancel or moles to cancel. So let's work an example here to explain this a little further. So this problem says how much energy in kilojoules is evolved by the complete combustion of 13.2 kilograms of propane. So we have 13.2 
kilograms of propane, and we want to know how many kilojoules are going to be released. So we see it's a negative sign, so energy is being evolved or released. This is an exothermic reaction. But how do I relate the amount of kilojoules released back to propane? Well, again, we use the stoichiometric coefficient. So there's one mole propane per every 2,044 kilojoules released. So let's start with what we know, which is 13.2 kilograms of propane. Again, we want to be in kilojoules, but kilojoules we just saw relates to moles. We have mass, so we need to get mass of propane into moles. Well, molar mass is what we would normally use, except molar mass is in grams per mole. We have kilograms. So let's go ahead and turn our kilograms of propane into grams of propane. And if you remember our lesson on the metric system, kilo stands for 10 to the third or a thousand. So for every one kilogram of propane, there is 10 to the third grams of propane. Okay, now we're in mass of propane, so we can go to moles. So we use the molar mass, so we add up three carbons and eight hydrogens. And I got 44.11 is the mass of a mole of propane. Now we're in moles, so we can go to kilojoules. And again, according to our balanced equation, there's going to be 2,044 kilojoules released. So we can put a negative there. per every one mole of propane. Okay, so now we put this in our calculator. We take 13.2 times 10 to the third divided by 44.11 times 2044. And it looks like it's going to be three significant digits because we have three here. This is an exact conversion. We have four here and four here. So with three significant digits, I got 6.12 times 10 to the fifth kilojoules. So this is how much energy would be released when you burned 13.2 kilograms of propane. Now one more time, I'll just say it again, that there really is no such thing as negative energy. Again, the negative sign is just a convention that lets you know that the energy is being released by the reaction, not absorbed. In other words, that negative sign tells you that this reaction is exothermic. Okay, well, let's work a couple more examples for practice. So this one says military MREs, or meals ready to eat, can be heated up on a flameless heater using this reaction right here. How many kilojoules of heat are produced by the reaction of 25.0 grams of water? Okay, so we have 25.0 grams of water, and we want to know how many kilojoules are going to be produced. Well, what's the connection between kilojoules and water in this reaction? Well, we see there's going to be 353 kilojoules released per every, well, this time it's two moles of water because of that two coefficient. Okay, so let's start with our 25 grams of water. Now we have mass of water. We want to be in moles, so we use molar mass. So you add up two hydrogens and an oxygen, and that has a molar mass of 18.02 per moles of water. Now we're in moles of water, and we want to be in kilojoules. And again, we just said that relationship is negative 300 and 53 kilojoules per two moles of water this time. Again, that two comes from the coefficient over here in the balanced equation. So the last step is to put all that in our calculator. So 25.0, that's three significant digits, divided by 18.02, that's four significant digits, times negative 353, that's three significant digits, divided by two, that's exact, so three is the fewest, so I got negative 245 kilojoules. So again, that's the amount of energy that's going to be released if you were to react 25.0 grams of water in this specific reaction. Okay, let's try one more. The landing module for the Apollo mission used a fuel made of hydrazine, N2H4, combined with an oxidizer, N2O4, or dinitrogen tetraoxide, how much energy in kilojoules is produced from the reaction 
of 273.9 grams of hydrazine and 545.8 grams of dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in what we know. So 273.9 grams of N2H4 and 545.8 grams of N2O4. And we want to know the energy in kilojoules. So kilojoules over here. Well, we have two different reactants. So this sounds like a limiting reactant problem. And if you haven't yet watched my lesson on that, I'll put a link to that in the video. But that means we're going to have to solve this problem twice. So we'll turn 273.9 grams of N2H4 into kilojoules. And then we'll turn 545.8 grams of N2O4 into kilojoules. And we'll choose the smallest. So let's go ahead and try that. So 273.9 grams of hydrazine in 2H4. So we have mass, so we know we want to turn that into moles. So we add up two nitrogens and four hydrogens, and I got 32.06 grams is a mole of N2H4. Okay, now we're in moles of N2H4, and we want to be in kilojoules. So we know from the balanced equation, that for every two moles of N2H4, we release 1,049 kilojoules. So we'll put that in here. So negative 1,049 kilojoules per two moles of N2H4. So we'll put this all in our calculator, 273.9 divided by 32.06 times negative 1,049 divided by two. And I got negative 4,481 kilojoules. So that's the amount of energy released by 273.9 grams of hydrazine. Well, how about the dinitrogen tetroxide? So we'll try that next. So 545.8 grams into O4. And now we turn that into moles using the molar mass. So we add up two nitrogens and four oxygens. And I got 92.02 grams per mole of N2O4. Now we're in moles, but we want to be in kilojoules. So now we look back to our balanced equation, and we see that for every one mole of N2O4, we release 1,049 kilojoules. So we use that for our last conversion factor here. So 1,049 kilojoules per one mole of N2O4. And now we put that in our calculator, and I got negative 6,222 kilojoules. So the question is, how much energy will we actually release? And for a limiting reactant problem, we know we have to choose the smallest number. Now again, as a reminder, the negative sign is a bit confusing, but again, that's just a convention that means the energy is released. You just want to look at the smallest number and magnitude. So would you release 4,481 kilojoules or 6,222 kilojoules? Well, again, it would be the smaller one, so 4,481, which means the hydrazine is the limiting reactant and the dinitrogen tetraoxide is the excess reactant. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure and like this video and also go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can also come over and visit me at GetChemistryHelp.com where you'll find many other free resources, worksheets, and videos that will help you learn chemistry fast and easy. Have a great day.